Hello, my name is Luke and welcome to this PyTorch tutorial series. In this video, we're looking at semantic clustering as a way to introduce Hugging Faces pre-trained models. So in previous videos, we introduced Hugging Face as a place where we can get pre-trained models and pre-written training code that we can use to speed up our development of our machine learning, deep learning application. In this video, we're going to see just how easy it is to use a text embedding model to introduce the usage of Hugging Faces pre-trained models. So the application we're going to use is semantic clustering. Basically, this is the idea that we can use a pre-trained text transformer model that will embed our text into a fixed length embedding vector. These transformer models have been trained so that if two pieces of text have a similar semantic meaning or similar content in them, then those fixed length text embeddings will be close together in this embedding space. As such, the distance between points in this embedding space tell us something about the semantic similarity between the original text inputs. So if we then cluster on this embedding space, we can find text inputs that are semantically similar, at least according to our model. We're also going to look at anomaly detection. So we're going to look at points that have been clustered together in that embedding space, but maybe we have some additional attribute that tells us that maybe these points shouldn't have been clustered together. And we'll get more into that in a bit. As per usual, all the code you see is available in my GitHub repo. A link is in the description below. So we've already gone into language models and transformers in the previous videos. So I'm going to brush over a lot of that and assume you've already got a background in that or some understanding of it. So we're going to use PyTorch's datasets as well. We're going to use the IMDB dataset. We haven't really looked at in a video yet, though I do have code. I do have a version of the AG News text classifier with the IMDB dataset instead. So IMDB is basically a website where you can review movies and rate movies. This particular data set only has the reviews as positive or negative. So I think there's a cutoff at like five out of 10, positive higher than that and negative lower than that. So we've got a binary classification here and normally you might train a classifier. Here what we're gonna do is embed the reviews with our text embedding model. And then we're gonna see where the positive reviews cluster and where the negative reviews cluster. And then once we've done that, we're gonna see if any negative reviews have clustered with any of the positive reviews. So constructing this data pipe and data loader is very similar to what I've done before. I'm not gonna go into too much detail there. As for creating the embedding model and the tokenizer, you can see it's very straightforward and very simple. The Hugging Face has their model zoo or a space where you can share models you've trained and pre-trained and fine-tuned yourself, as well as all of the infrastructure and all the classes and everything around that, so that we can actually you know, upload our model definition very easily, but also download and construct a model very easily that someone else is maybe trained. So the auto tokenizer and auto model here from the transformers library, the hugging face transformers library will construct our model and tokenizer just by providing the user and the actual name for that model that we want to use. So we're going to use the tokenizer and the model from BAAI. And this is just the version of the model, a small version, English version 1.5. If you search for hugging face text embeddings, you can see there's a whole bunch of different text embeddings here. And you can search through this and, and find different models and use those. This one in particular is good for this sort of semantic clustering. It's in fact used for specific applications, text search applications like RAG models. Because as I mentioned at the start here, if this model produces embeddings that are similar for similar text inputs, then we can actually do vector search and given an input text string and find other text strings that are similar maybe in a database. So we can create our tokenizer and our model, set our model to eval mode. If you're doing this for the first time, it will download the tokenizer and will download the model, but I've already got that set up. All right, to extract the embeddings, we do a very similar thing. This is what we do when we're training the model with PyTorch or evaluating. We can just loop through our data loader, have our label and our text will encode our text with our tokenizer, and then we'll put that into our model. Don't worry too much about the structure here. This is just how we index the output of our model. And then similar to our text classifiers, where we include an additional classification token. If you remember back to the transformer classifier, that very first token in our sequence then goes through the output classifier head to produce the classification. And so we're gonna use that first embedding or first classification embedding as our text embedding. We're gonna then normalize that embedding and then log it as well as the actual label. So this label will either be zero or one or negative and positive, and that will be the label for the actual text review. So we can run this. Here, I'm only taking the first 10,000. There's a lot of data points in this, but just to make it manageable for this video, we're only gonna take the first 10,000 reviews. And I've shuffled the data set, so it should be different every time.
Okay, so we have our approximately 10,000 embeddings for our reviews and their labels. We're just gonna concatenate those into one big tensor and then cast it as a NumPy array so we can use some other libraries. So the first thing we're gonna do is just cluster it. So I'm just gonna use k-means clustering. If you're not familiar, you can check out my other previous videos on that. So I'm just gonna define two clusters because I know that there are two labels here. To do so, I'm just using the sklearn module cluster. So I haven't constructed my own here, but just for simplicity, I'm using that one. So we can perform the clustering. It shouldn't take too long. And what we'll do now is we'll visualize the clustering as well as the labels. So to do so, we're gonna to need to use some dimension reduction. So I'm gonna use PCA to just reduce it down from the 384, I think it is, to just 20. And then we're gonna use TSNE. So PCA should not take too long. TSNE is a bit more of a complicated method than PCA. TSNE tries to maintain the distances between points as we go from the higher dimensional to the lower dimensional space. And it's just better for visualization in that way, though it does take a little bit of time here. Okay, so that's all done now. And now let's visualize our clusters. What I'm doing here is I'm first getting all the indices for the cluster zero, and then I'm indexing the 2D embeddings that we got from TSNE with that, just so I can split apart both clusters and so I can plot them with different markers in different colors. So this first one here, we're only plotting the cluster zero points, plotting only the cluster one points. And for both of those, we're using the original semantic labeling, so the positive and negative, to actually define the color. So there's gonna be some points in cluster zero that were labeled positive and some negative and some in cluster one that are labeled positive and negative. I'm using different shapes for the markers to distinguish between the two cluster types. It is a bit difficult to see here, but hopefully you can kind of see that the round points are from cluster one and the sort of lines, the straight points are from cluster zero. The colors dictate the semantic label, right? Not as it's kind of shown here, the actual cluster. So you can see there's some round points that are yellow and some that are blue, that is the semantic label. But you can see that for say cluster one here, most of the points are blue. And for cluster zero, most of the points are yellow, but there are some in cluster zero that are blue and some in cluster one that are yellow. And these points are gonna be our outliers. We can also see the red X's here. That just indicates the cluster center for both of these clusters. So now what I wanna do is I wanna find these outliers and do our anomaly detection. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take cluster zero as an example and find all of those points in cluster zero that have a semantic label that is not the same as the majority of the points. So the first thing to do is to index all of my labels and embeddings that I can extract only the labels and points that belong to cluster zero. Once I've done that, I can then find the median or the most common label for cluster zero. So you can see the most common semantic label for cluster zero is label one. And mostly this cluster contains positive reviews, but as you can see from our histogram, there are some that are labeled as a negative review. So why might this be the case? Well, Maybe some of the points are just labeled incorrectly, or maybe some of them have been written such that the text embedding model has extracted some maybe positive things from it, but maybe the person was being sarcastic. It's quite a common thing where you have someone being sarcastic and saying, wow, this movie is really great if you like bad acting, right? And so, wow, this movie is really great is a very common thing to see in a positive review. But here they're using it to be sarcastic and it's actually a negative review. But hopefully we can see that here. So the next thing to do is to then find the actual outliers. So we know that outliers are the ones that are not semantic label one. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to say all of the cluster labels, so the semantic labels that are equal to the median one and then not, so all the ones that are not equal to the median, we wanna index those and we're gonna extract all of the outliers, so all of the points in cluster zero that do not have the semantic label that is the most common. It can be a bit confusing with the indexing, but hopefully if you can follow this along, it makes sense what we're doing, at least conceptually. I'm also indexing the cluster zero indices with the outlier indices so that we have the original indices for these outliers in cluster zero relative to the original data set. So now to sort of sort this out, what we're gonna do is gonna find what I'm calling the sort of worst outliers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find the outliers, say for cluster zero, that are closest to that cluster center. We're gonna try and find the data points that are a part of cluster zero, but labeled as negative, but semantically, according to the model, are closest to the average cluster zero 
point. So these are going to be the ones that are most like a cluster zero or a positive review, but are actually labeled negative. So maybe we can find the sort of most extreme case here. But to do that, I'm just going to take all of the outlier points, the actual embeddings, find the distance between each of those outlier embeddings and the cluster zero center. I'm then going to use arg sort to get the indices. So sort will find it from the smallest to the largest. Uh, so it will give us the indices of those. And we're going to take the top five. And these are going to be the top five worst. And again, we're going to use that to index the cluster zero outlier indices to get the original indices from the data set. So we can then index our actual text. So we can see these are the indices from the original 10,000 data points. And we're going to find the actual text. Here. All right. So if we have a quick read of this. Oh, there we go. I can see already. If you want to see a thrilling action movie, don't watch it because you might <laughs> lose your will to live halfway through. However, if you want a good laugh, please watch it. So there you go. They're being sarcastic in this review. They're saying that, you know, it's such a bad movie, but if you want to want to laugh, you can watch see it. In a positive review, someone's saying, you know, if you want a good laugh, watch this movie. It's great. But here they're saying, if you want a good laugh, watch this movie because it's so bad. Right. And so the text embedding model has probably extracted that and said, oh, well, this is got this sort of information in it, which is positive semantics in it. And then when we do our clustering, this is gonna cluster with positive reviews because they both have these positive semantics in it. But the text embedding model isn't doing the clustering, it's just extracting pieces from the text to produce the embedding. And this is getting clustered with the positive reviews because it has these sort of positive words and phrases in it. If you wanna watch a thrilling action movie, right? maybe that seems like it's referring to the movie as a thrilling action movie. It hasn't sort of connected with the fact that it then says, don't watch it. And then they say here, actually at the end, I re recommend you watch it with some friends and a good amount of beer. So they're saying they recommend you watch it, which is something that a positive review would say, but they're, they're kind of doing that in jest here. Okay, so hopefully from that example, you get an idea of what we're doing here and how we can use semantic clustering and anomaly detection to find some outliers in our data. Hopefully you also saw how easy it can be to use a pre-trained model from Hugging Face and integrate that with your existing code. In the future, we'll look at some more pre-trained models from Hugging Face and also how we can fine tune our own starting from a Hugging Face model. If you found this video interesting, remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.